let us take this example of this elbow flexion example, where I am carrying a load and lifting this load. So, I am lifting this load. So, the biceps, let us see this is the bicep. The biceps muscle has to actively contract for me to overcome the resisting moment and concentric action, concentric action. So, in this case the biceps for this particular action is called the agonist muscle. The intent tracks to perform the intended action is called the agonist muscle and there may be more than one muscle doing that. So, they would all be agonists for that particular movement. Okay. So, it is possible that in this case depending on the load that is being lifted the biceps you may also have two more muscles the brachialis and the brachioradialis which are also muscles that are elbow flexors. They may also be recruited to perform that in which case those are also agonists. Now, the antagonist, so agonists are the muscles creating the same joint movement. The antagonists these are the muscles that are opposing or producing the opposite the muscles that are the elbow flexors are my agonists and the muscles that are responsible for extension of the elbow are the antagonists for this particular action. Sorry? They may or may not be, they may or may not be. No, not necessarily because you can even when it is lengthened, you can if you go back to the length tension curve. Even when it is lengthening, you could have active to um, even in the lengthened form. Let me give you an example. Um, if you are walking downhill, okay, so your knees, you know, when you are walking downhill, gravity is making you come down fast okay now you have to control your knee okay your knee may be bent the knee extensors may be in length may be elongated may be lengthened but they'll still be contracting to prevent you from falling okay so that's an example where in the lengthened condition you still have active muscle action happening okay so there that is your agonist muscle, even though it is in the lengthened form. Similarly, here another example with the same elbow. If I am carrying a heavy load okay, and I start lowering it, okay, to what controls the speed? It is still my flexors, but they are lengthening, and I am still you you you'll be able to see the bulge right if you have a carrying a heavy you know that the muscle is also acting it's also contracting to control this movement okay so in this case the biceps are again the agonist muscle even though it is being lengthened because the load that's actually um, causing this 
you know working against this is gravity okay it's not necessarily the if if i use my triceps to extend my elbow then the triceps are the agonist and the biceps would be the antagonist but if i am not biceps are actually act still the agonist muscle for this particular task okay so it's very task based it's not that some muscles are always agonist some muscles are always antagonists like i said if i act if i actively extend um, the, the knee the quadriceps muscle acts to actively extend the knee so then again my quadriceps muscle is my agonist and the hamstrings which are resisting that or it are the and okay if i am flexing my leg like this okay then that my hamstrings to flex my knee i have to contract my hamstrings to flex my knee so there the hamstrings are the agonists because i am voluntarily flex so the hamstrings are the agonists in that case the quadriceps are my antagonists so the same set of muscles can function as agonists or antagonists it really depends on the task okay flex my tri i mean i could uh, contract my triceps also right when i do that provide additional resistance i could do that because these are all voluntary muscle the skeletal muscle can be controlled voluntarily so i could contract it okay when you are in therapy or for exercise they will teach you to kind of isolate your actions so that you work hardest on the muscle that you want to build strength in so they'll say no 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 relax relax your other muscle because typically when you are tense what happens you try to contract everything that's possible okay so they'll say no 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 relax this one do only this do only you know if you're doing an elbow flexion exercise say relax your triceps depends on what you depends on the objective of the exercise if you're trying to strengthen your elbow flexors for instance you want to focus all your uh, when we do the static analysis later you will see that if i'm also extending uh, sorry if i'm also using my um uh triceps then i would actually be loading my joints more okay which may not be desirable okay so i want to only load it to the extent that's necessary so if i'm using both muscles on both sides to uh, uh tighten and uh, um exert tension then i would be loading the joint more so it may be more um uh, uh, favorable to only use one muscle action to perform a particular task okay so then you also have muscles that are called the and this is usually in your stabilizing effect on the um in that complex to allow your arm or leg to do what you want it to do okay so these are muscles that really don't move very much okay the mu the muscles in the chest and the shoulder or uh, not the shoulder but in the back and the chest which kind of hold things in place so that's why they call the stabilizer muscles similarly you have in the pelvis you know as you're walking to maintain the step because everything is it's all you know bunch of interconnected links so to hold the pelvis stable while you make movements with your leg like for instance when you're walking you will have muscles that act only to do that they are called stabilizer muscles so in a muscle and they typically undergo very little movement so stabilizers
specific movement in an adjacent joint occur. Okay. It is like keeping one thing fixed so that you can move the other the way you want it. Okay. So, these are muscles that go undergo minimal movement. Then the fourth kind are what are known as the synergists or the neutralizers. And the function of these as the name suggests you know neutralizer is to eliminate an undesired joint action. So, is a muscle. that contracts to eliminate an undesired So, if you contract your gluteus maximus okay, in the back, then you can produce thigh extension. It is a, it is an extensor, hip extensor. Gluteus maximus is one of your hip extensors, but the way it acts, it also, te it also tends to rotate the thigh externally. Now, if that external rotation of the thigh is unwanted, then a couple other muscles contract to internally rotate that, so that only your extension is left. Okay. So, that is the um, purpose of a neutralizer muscle. So, if the external rotation is undesired, then you have other muscles that uh, similarly in the arms also, sometimes when you flex your arm, okay. then it may be accompanied by a supination uh, action. So, the pronator may also act along with it to prevent that if you do not want that particular action. We do not think about these things so much, right? but that is what is happening. The muscles are working synergistically to ensure that the desired movement is what is performed. Okay. Yes. So, in that case, let's say with a stabilizer or a neutralizer. Yeah. Do we really control it, or is it an indirect control? Because it looks like it is more of a feedback. Right. Let's say the antagonist is going to act. You'll have to really look at the neuroscience of it to see. You know, we are not getting into the control aspects of the uh, musculoskeletal system here, uh, but in many cases we are. Uh, so, I can decide that I want to do this, you know I can flex my elbow like this or like this, but I am making a conscious decision to flex it in a particular way. The muscles work with the neural system to ensure that things are activated such that my desired action happens. Okay. But I think if you maybe uh, look at uh, do the course on neuroscience of human movement, you might get uh, the uh, more detailed answers to these questions. And there I am sure there are also areas of uh, active research because there is still a lot we do not know about how these things work. Even the models, these they are all approximate you know and they are all areas of very active research. Even the muscle action, um, you know the passive tension, the Hills muscle model, people are constantly tweaking it. 
people are constantly looking at how to understand the physiology of the muscle and how to understand how that translates into the actions that we see or that we think that we control. Okay. So, those are aspects of uh, neuroscience. Okay. So, I think with this I will um, you have a pretty good idea now of um, what we have done so far is that we have looked at the bones, we have looked at the structure of the bones, we have looked at how the bones come together to form different kinds of joints and we have looked at how muscles influence the motion about those joints, okay, how, how they control. Next we will start looking at specific areas of the body, we will start off with say the upper you know the arm uh, and then, then we will start looking at doing some analysis to understand okay, what are the sort of forces that are or the torques that a muscle has to generate to perform a certain task. Okay. We will start looking at some static analysis first, essentially we will be applying the principles of mechanics to the structure of the human body. We will